Hi everybody, Chessie's here with me and he's excited because we have a new arrival from Lionel. This is the Canadian Pacific Rail Tours 460 number 972 and we're going to check it out right now on Eric's Trains. Alright, so for today's unboxing from my knife collection we'll be using this, a Gearade Burry utility knife. There it is. And Chessie, oh, right on cue, he gets off the box. What a cat. So we'll go ahead and crack this open. I just picked this up a couple days ago. So it's a fairly new arrival. I've already got a Canadian National 460 10-wheeler. This is Canadian Pacific, but this one, unlike the other one, has whistle steam and Bluetooth. And there's the tag. Canadian Pacific Rail Tours Legacy 460 number 972. Legacy and Bluetooth control, Legacy rail sounds, fan driven smoke, whistle steam, and 031 minimum curve. So very friendly to those with small layouts with tight curves. Here's the instructions. Always important to read these. All right. There it is. Looks very nice. Now, if you noticed on the box, it said Canadian Pacific slash rail tours. And that's because after this thing was retired from revenue service, it served an excursion service for many years during the 1980s. It's now at Strasbourg awaiting restoration, so it's no longer working, but hopefully one day they'll get it restored and operational again. Now, I'm not the expert on CP972, but I'm sure somebody will fill us all in in the comments section below. And there's the tender. Very nice. Here's the dummy O-gauge coupler and the spare tires. And then over here, we've got the, I believe these are the mounting pads for scale couplers. If you want to put a scale coupler on the back of the tender, I could be wrong, but I think that's what these are for. And then we've got the wrench tool, the driver hex nut tool. And then we've got a pipette to load smoke fluid. So here it is on the track looking mighty sharp. So Lionel offered this model in their 2020 Volume 2 catalog and these began arriving in stores in mid to late April 2021. So as of the making of this video this is a brand new model. Lionel offered the new 10-wheeler in eight different road names. They did B&M, New York Central, Reading and Northern, Rutland, Sioux Line, Southern, Texas and Pacific, and of course Canadian Pacific. So unfortunately I've got a bit of bad news about this specific model, CP972. When I first took it out of the box I had a feeling something was missing but I couldn't quite put my finger on it and so I went back and looked at the catalog and sure enough I was right. The very reason why I ordered this specific 10-wheeler was because in the catalog, Lionel had said that they would ship this model with some alternate nameplates for the tender that you could attach magnetically, kind of like they did for UP844 a few years ago. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link to it in this video. Go ahead and check it out if you haven't seen it. So the reason they were going to do the alternate nameplates was because Canadian Pacific 972 served an excursion service for many years, and so to recognize that, Lionel was going to provide some alternate nameplates. And that's why on the box that you just saw, it said, 
Canadian Pacific slash rail tours. Unfortunately, as you just saw, those alternate nameplates were not in the box. So when I realized that, I called YNL support and they said, yes, we're aware of the issue. And what happened was the factory simply forgot to put those alternate nameplates in the box. And they said, as soon as they get them in, they will ship them to me. So if you buy this specific model and you don't have those alternate nameplates in the box, make sure you contact Lionel Support and they'll get you taken care of. And by the way, this issue only affects this specific model, CP972, and that's because of the eight road names they offered, this was the only one that came with alternate nameplates. So for the other seven road names, this is not an issue. Now, I know a lot of you guys out there in YouTube land freak out whenever Lionel makes a mistake, and I've never understood that. I never freak out when they make a mistake because guess what? Mistakes happen. That's life. These things are designed and built by human beings and humans are not perfect. It'd be one thing if they were a huge corporation like Apple or something and they have tons of people in place to ensure that no mistakes happen. But Lionel is a fairly small company and they do the best they can and sometimes they make mistakes. It happens. So what matters to me is not the mistake. I don't care about the mistake. What's important to me is how they handle the mistake. And as long as Lionel rectifies it and makes it okay, that's all that's important to me. Anyway, when the alternate nameplates do arrive, I'll post a picture or do a really short video at that time. So let's go over some stats and facts on this model. The combined length of the engine and the tender is right at 18 and a half inches. The combined weight of the engine and the tender is right at seven pounds, seven ounces. When tested, this engine produced two pounds 11 ounces of pulling power and the minimum curve needed to operate this model is 031. Construction on the engine and the tender is a mixture of sheet metal, die cast metal, and brass for the add-on detail parts. This model features all LED lighting. It's got two fan driven smoke units, one for the smokestack and one for the whistle steam smoke effect. On the inside you've got legacy control and Bluetooth on board and back in the tender you've got the electronics for legacy rail sounds. There are five ways to run this engine. The preferred method method, of course, is going to be to use Lionel's legacy command system, as that will give you access to all of this model's advanced features and functions. However, you can also run this engine with Lionel's classic TMCC command system, or thanks to the Bluetooth connectivity, you can run this model with the Lionel Lion Chief app on your smartphone or tablet, or you can use the Lion Chief universal remote. And then finally, you can run this engine conventionally with nothing more than a transformer and some track. And finally, the last thing we're going to do before before we start this thing up is BFIMO, best feature in my opinion. And unfortunately, my pick for best feature this time around is something that I can't show you right now because it's those alternate nameplates for the tender. And as you saw, they weren't in the box. But as soon as they arrive, like I said, I'll do a short video or post a picture or something like that. But yeah, that was the whole reason I bought this specific model was for those alternate nameplates. All right, and with that, let's go ahead and power this thing up and have some fun. This is the Yardmaster. Get it set up running. Your train will be ready at 17.30. Over. Copy that, dispatcher. Standing by. Out. So here is the default whistle. And here's the default bell. I said default whistle and default bell because like most high-end O-scale locomotives Lionel's making right now, this locomotive has multiple whistles and multiple bell sounds to choose from. So here's what I mean. Here's the default whistle again. Here's number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. I kind of like that one. And then back to the default. And 
and it's the same with the bell. So here's the default bell again. And then number two. Number three. Number four. I kind of like that one. Number five. And this should be back to the default. Another cool new feature that Lionel is putting into a lot of their O-scale steam locomotives these days is bicolor classification lights. So if I go into the lighting menu on the Legacy remote, and I'm not sure how well you can see this, but I press and hold AUX2, and that takes me to the lighting menu, and right here I can change the color of the classification lights. So right now they're white, which indicates an extra train. If I change them to green, that indicates a regular train with another one following behind it. And then if I turn them off completely, that's just a regular train. Pretty cool. So regular train, extra train, and regular train with another one following behind it. Pretty darn cool, I'd say. All right, and with that, we're ready to move it out. I've got a little excursion train behind CP972, so let's go ahead and roll it out.
right, so there you have it. This is a great little engine, and I'm really glad that I ordered one. Now, I've been told that these engines are selling really well, and one of the main reasons for that is because the price is so attractive. The retail price on these 10-wheelers, brand new, is right at 750 bucks. And yeah, I know 750 is a lot of money, but as far as O-scale steam engines go, that is a great deal. And keep in mind, that's the retail price. If you go through a good Lionel dealer, you should be able to get a little bit of a discount off that retail price and make it even more affordable. And as always, if you're looking for a good Lionel dealer, try my favorite train store, which is Legacy Station. You can find them on the web at www.legacystation.com or give them a call at 770-339-7780. If you'd like to support this channel, I would greatly appreciate it. That can be done through Patreon at patreon.com slash ericstrains. Patreon supporters get all sorts of perks and benefits, and you can read about all that on my Patreon page. I'd like to put a big thank you out there to all of my current Patreon supporters. Your support means the world not only to me, but to the future of this channel. And finally, if you'd like to buy an Eric's Trains t-shirt or anything else I might be selling, check out the Eric's Trains online store at ericstrains.com store. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm Eric Siegel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.